America's war in Vietnam lasted 15 years. But the Vietnamese have known war a long time, more than 2,000 years. Their traditional enemy was China, their giant neighbor to the north. For centuries, Vietnam was the southernmost part of China's empire. The Vietnamese absorbed Chinese culture and customs, but they never accepted Chinese rule. Today, throughout Vietnam, they commemorate the Trung sisters, who led a rebellion against China in the first century after Christ. The rebellion failed, but the Trung sisters are still heroines, part of a long line of Vietnamese who fought foreign domination. Our history, from the time of the Hung kings and the Trung sisters to the era of President Ho Chi Minh, has been a history of great struggle. Throughout history, the Vietnamese people have always done their best to defend the country and to build the nation. They fought for almost a thousand years after the Trungs to evict the Chinese. Then they pushed south to their present borders, conquering other peoples in their path. The country expanded so rapidly that it fragmented in a series of civil wars. Despite their internal conflicts, the Vietnamese regarded themselves as one country and one people. But they were too weak and divided to fight off the conquering Europeans in the 19th century. Around 1860, the French seized the area near Saigon. They took over central and northern Vietnam during the next two decades, and by 1885, Vietnam had once again lost its independence. French Indochina at the end of the 1880s. Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam, which the French divided into three regions, Cochin China, Annam, and Tonkin. To the Vietnamese, the division was a deliberate attempt to destroy their national unity. The Vietnamese resisted the French called all resistors pirates, and they sent in the troops for the first pacification of Vietnam. They staged public executions. The severed heads were photographed and printed on postcards, which soldiers sent home to sweethearts in Paris with kisses from Hanoi. It took 20 years to get the Vietnamese resistance under control. Then the French could concentrate on the economics of colonialism trying to transform Vietnam into a source of profit. The people here suffered a lot because of high taxes and hard forced labor. They worked from dawn till dusk, but they did not have enough to eat. The cheap labor profited a few French companies, even though Indochina was a financial sinkhole. The French nation spent millions of francs each year to protect and support the colony while French companies like Michelin Rubber made millions in profits from factories and plantations. There were no major uprisings during these hard years. Vietnamese society was reeling under the impact of westernization. French culture permeated the cities, bringing western fashions and ideas. The Vietnamese elite began to give their sons a Western education. Almost all of those who would lead the next resistance to the French were French educated. Among them was Ho Chi Minh. Ho Chi Minh's early years are difficult to trace. He was always mysterious about himself, giving few interviews, and preferring in later life to present himself as the benevolent Uncle Ho. Ho was born about 1890 as Nguyen Tat Tan, the son of an official who resigned rather than serve under the French. As a young man, Ho left his country, working as a shiphand and cook in America, Britain, and France. 
In 1917, Ho moved to Paris. He took the pseudonym Nguyen I Quoc, Nguyen the Patriot, and began to agitate for Vietnam's independence. He tried to plead his cause at the Versailles Conference following World War I, but was not admitted. His effort made him famous among the Vietnamese in France. In 1920, Nguyen I Quoc became a founding member of the French Communist Party, the first Vietnamese communist. The communists sent him to Moscow for training in 1923. He traveled widely, organizing expatriate Vietnamese into a revolutionary party. Reports during the next 17 years placed him in Germany, China, Thailand, France, Russia. France was proud of its colonial record. Dans de nombreuses régions, autrefois désertiques, où des tribus hostiles les unes aux autres traînaient une existence misérable, les civilisateurs français ont apporté la paix, le travail, la prospérité, la joie. Par son importance et sa fécondité, le domaine français d'outre-mer est devenu un élément essentiel de la vie économique mondiale, une force active de la civilisation, un glorieux témoignage de la grandeur de la France. Nineteen forty brought the end of this grandeur of France. 